everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott Schaefer with Well for Mobile Sawmill and today I am sharpening bandsaw blades on my uh, sharpener that I got from Norwood Sawmills. It's a very precise way of sharpening your blades. Uh, it uses a Dremel with a grinding stone that you can also get from Norwood and you can adjust it to fit a lot of different sized blades. Alright, so here we have a close-up shot of the sharpener. Uh, it's going to go through like this. So there's a lot of adjustments here. So to start off with, we have three holes here, three holes here, and there's a pin that goes through one hole on this side, one hole on this side. That's going to hold the elevation of the blade. All right, the second adjustment is these screws here, and these screws just kind of push the blade back against the backrest or the backstop. And then same with these wheels here, as they also keep the blade from moving back and forth this way. Another adjustment we have is this top knob up here, and this adjusts the height. So down below I have an arrow that's going to the left and it says raise because if we turn it to the left or counterclockwise it'll raise the grinding stone. You can see it going up and this lowers it so it's going back down. Now behind the blade we have this knob right here. If you turn it clockwise it gets closer meaning the grinding stone is going to get closer to the front of the tooth. And you can see it moves this arm right here. This arm is what's pushing the tooth into the grinding stone. So those are the adjustments. So now we're gonna actually do some sharpening. Now I wanna start out by sharpening just the front of the tooth. So I need to adjust the height of the grinding stone. We wanna hit about an eighth of an inch or so of the top of the tooth. All right, so now you can see it's just barely hitting the front of the tooth. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now that it's on there, I'm gonna back it off just a little bit so it doesn't actually touch the tooth. And I'm gonna turn on the Dremel. All right, and now I'm gonna slowly move it closer to the teeth. And for every adjustment you make, it takes two turns for it to, to uh, go into effect. I'm gonna lower it just a bit. Now we're looking at a a good grind. You're not taking off a lot of material or anything. You're just barely nicking it. But you'll get a feel for how much contact you want with the tooth in the grinding stone because there is such thing as too much contact and then of course there's such thing as not enough. So you'll kind of find that sweet middle ground um, as you go. And it really took me a while to get a good feel for, for how to do this and, and to get it set up right. But what we want to do now that we're started is um, at our starting point, we just want to draw a line with our marker here. So we know when this line comes back around, that's where we started. So we're going to go around once, um, hitting the front of the teeth. And once we've done that, now we're going to adjust it to hit the back of the teeth in the gully. What I found is best or easiest is just do three little wrist turns away from the the tooth. So we're going to turn it counterclockwise because we want it to get further away. So one, two, three. That's all it takes. And now you can see it's clearing that tooth by about an eighth of an inch. Then the same thing up here, I'm going to start out with one, two, three to drop it down. Now we're going to start it. And then I'm going to slowly let it down until it makes good contact. All right, now I'm probably a little bit too far, so I'm gonna go a little closer to the front of the teeth. So the idea here is that we wanna get the entire gully. So you want it to strike right about here, and you want it to grind all the way up the back of the tooth and off the tip of the tooth. You don't wanna just do the back of the tooth because what happens is when the blade flexes and heats up, it starts to get, you get micro cracks right here in the gully of the blade. It starts to split. And so when you grind, and they're, I mean, they're like micro, micro. So when you grind off this gully, you're actually getting rid of those cracks. And so you're restabilizing the blade. So let's just do a couple more. You'll kind of get a feel for how it's supposed to feel uh, after you sharpen it. 
and um, you'll be able to tell if you did a bad job at sharpening it um, versus if you did a good job and there's a very slight difference. All right, so sometimes when you hit nails with your blade um, it'll break a tooth off or it'll uh, just dull it really bad or you'll get like uh, metal shavings that are actually stuck on the front of the tooth and you can still use the blade. Um, the grinder will get rid of those those metal filings. Um, it obviously the it won't do anything about the missing teeth, um, but it really depends on how picky you are with your cuts. I'm extremely picky with my cuts. If I lose a tooth on a blade, I pitch it, it's gone. If I sharpen a blade and put it on the saw and it doesn't perform for at least two hours, it's gone. Because that just means that probably something happened to it that it's beyond, uh, it's beyond repair or it's beyond sharpening. Like for instance, it could have a te uh, the teeth could be bent or maybe they're just worn down so bad that they're beyond sharpening and you can't visually see anything that's wrong with it, but it's probably not worth your time to sharpen the blade over and over and over again to try to get it to cut again um, when you're only gonna get a couple hours of work out of it. But really it depends on what you're using your sawmill for, the frequency that you're using your sawmill. Another option that you can do is get cobalt uh, steel blades, it's a, a cobalt mix. The cobalt blades can cut through nails without losing any teeth and so at least you can get through the nail and finish your cut. Whereas this blade, if it hits a nail, it might actually just stop right then and there. Again, it's, it's, it depends on what you're doing with your saw and what kind of wood uh, and where your wood came from. So anyway, that's the sharpener. I know Norwood also has a more automated sharpener than this even, and they also have the less automated uh, where you can do it by hand. But I recommend, this is like, I believe this is the absolute minimum. Even if you don't have a Norwood sawmill, um, the sharpener will work on a lot of different size uh, blades. So definitely a good investment. All right guys, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.